What is sold to us as artificial intelligence in our phones and internet services often feels, at least to me, to be more artificial than intelligence. But now, decades after the term AI was coined, we hear leaders in the field claim that true AI, or artificial general intelligence, on par or better than human, is just around the corner. Some say it will be humanity's greatest invention. Others, that it will be its last. I'm Tomasz Koper, and this is Connected. When the term artificial intelligence first came about in 1956, the leaders of the field claimed that machines as intelligent as humans were a mere generation away. Now, that prediction didn't come true, but with the current rate of progress, this idea may no longer be as far-fetched as 70 years ago. In January, Sam Altman, the founder of OpenAI and one of the creators of ChatGPT, wrote on his personal blog, We are now confident we know how to build artificial general intelligence as we have traditionally understood it. We believe that in 2025 we may see the first AI agents join the workforce and materially change the output of companies. He then continues to say that we are beginning to turn our aim beyond that, to superintelligence in the true sense of the word. Superintelligent tools could massively accelerate scientific discovery and innovation well beyond what we are capable of doing on our own, and in turn, massively increase abundance and prosperity. Now, if you're like me, these words likely stirred up both excitement and dread about the future. AI and superintelligence are vast and complex topics, so for this discussion, we'll narrow it down to the question, are societies and economies ready for what's potentially years or even months away? Joining us for this conversation, we welcome Ethan Tu, the founder of Taiwan AI Labs, and Arthur van der Wees from the Institute for Accountability in the Digital Age, speaking to us from The Hague in the Netherlands. Um, Ethan, I, I want to start with you. What, what do you make of Sam Altman's prediction? Um, independent agents in 2025 and super intelligence possibly not long after. Yeah, I, I, I think uh, it's uh, pretty consistent with what we observe um, because uh, artificial super intelligence, if we look into the improvement of the computing power and improvement of the data set, uh, I would I would say not for long, uh, the artificial general intelligence will be here. The AI can learn by itself and can adjust by itself. And this is also one of the, uh, one of the good topics we are working on in Taiwan. And, and Arthur, what do you make of uh, this timeline, this prediction? So having been in this uh, domain uh, and other emerging technologies for uh, 25 plus years, you know, these uh, claims have been popping up indeed uh, multiple times, not only on AI, also on data analytics, big data, BI, and of course also compute, uh, whether it's HPC, high performance computing or quantum, or robotics, humanoids. So, you know, I do uh, read it like that, that, you know, it's good marketing to talk about it. Uh, I do, of course, see uh, increased capabilities uh, on uh, algorithms and, and computing power. Regarding data, I think we're still uh, not there to actually feed anything uh, to make it uh, uh, either generally, uh, uh, so an AGI level or, or let alone a super intelligent. So, so I think it's uh, it's further away, uh, even though a lot of things that we see now already was we were able to do that in the 90s, in the zeros, and in the 10s. So I'm a bit skeptical about the uh, the claim. Yeah, it, it does feel a little bit like uh, fusion power. It's always 20 years away, and it was 20 years away in the 70s as well. Um, but uh, I want to understand uh, more about what your orga organizations do. So, so Ethan, um, Taiwan AI Labs uh, is promoting a federated non-profit and decentralized approach to AI. Uh, what does that mean in practice? Yeah, so when we are so talking about the uh, artificial intelligence, a lot of time uh, we talk about profit and we talk about how we can aggregate big data. But in Taiwan, Lab, uh, when we do the artificial intelligence, we talk about 
trustworthy, responsible first. The majority of the AI, they are trained based on the public data instead of personal data. They are trained on the web data instead of institute data. So how we can use the institute data to train the artificial intelligence? So we, we have a trustworthy and responsible way, we call it Federated Alliance. Uh, so in Taiwan, we have a Federated Learning Team uh, with the common data model and common protocol. So the team, the hospital in Taiwan can arrange the data in the one common way to train AI in the uh, one uh, standard protocol. And we have successfully uh, 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 worked with 92% uh, of the medical centers in Taiwan. So not only the personal health data, but also the uh, medical image, genomic data that is in the hospital. We can use the 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 way that comply with the GDPR and uh, hospitals' privacy and integrity uh, uh, standards uh, in order to arrange all the data. So we can train the AI to support the doctor to make decision and to support the doctor to do the diagnosis support. Well, um, Arthur, in, in our previous conversation, you said that the mission uh, of the Institute for Accountability in the Digital Age is that you won't be needed anymore in the future. W what did you mean by that? Well, that, of course, would be a, a big dream if, uh, you know, the, the mission that we have, meaning that uh, organizations, companies, uh, either governments, uh, public, private, uh, and society at large, you know, uh, thinks about doing before they actually use uh, technical capabilities uh, while they're using it, that they're also mindful of uh, things that go wrong. They have the mechanisms in, in there to actually arbitrate and in, uh, improve, or even if it's getting in, into an, a dis disbalance, uh, that already uh, uh, capabilities designed and embedded that can rebalance such systems. And of course, uh, every time you want to update or upgrade or, or in other ways uh, decommission or going further through the life cycle, there is also accountability. But I think it will take a long time before we get there. And meanwhile, new technologies emerge. Uh, I don't know what we're going to call AGI super intelligence in the next round, probably another, another term. So, but I think it's a good, a good way to get the right passion and motivation out uh, to everybody. Well, um, let's uh, see where we are on this path to AGI, possibly. Now, there are many ideas on a possible path to AGI, and this framework from OpenAI is just one of them. But since they are one of the companies at the forefront of AGI efforts, and one that you may have heard of, let's look at how they view their own progress. Right now, it seems their models are somewhere between levels 1 and 2, so approaching PhD level task complexity. With level 3, agents coming very soon. But the company's founder, Sam Altman, says level five is not too far off. And that means an intelligence so powerful that it could replace entire systems like healthcare management and make big decisions using original ideas. So, Ethan, existing chatbots like ChatGPT already seem very lifelike and can fool many people into thinking that they're interacting with a human being. So how will we even know that we've achieved AGI instead of talking to a very sophisticated chatbot. When we say make the decision by itself, for example, in the healthcare, I would say that would be uh, more uh, that would be a, a lot more hurdle from my point of view. For example, it, it's it's some, it's uh, similar to, uh, uh, for example, like uh, when Tesla say uh, we will achieve full self driving. The problem is not and the car to drive by itself. There are more things we need to consider when the artificial intelligence make decision by itself because uh, who is uh, responsible for the car accident? Right now, the artificial intelligence support the doctor to make a decision. But when the artificial uh, intelligence make decision by itself, so who is responsible? I would say the regulation right now uh, is uh, in a big debate and there are a lot of discussion. Well, well, Arthur, um, you know, even if we agree that uh, AI will never make decisions by itself, um, it can have massive impact not on just on healthcare, but we can easily imagine it being in charge of, you know, tax collection or, or even elections. Um, what kind of impact do you think it might have or will have on our societies and how they function? 
Well, <clears throat> many different uh, impacts, of course, also I'm always excited uh, to uh, read and, uh, and, and learn about uh, uh, new uh, capabilities. I always like to see whether they work and how they work together with other experts. So always multiple brains in a room, never one. <clears throat> so that is one of my points, of course, regarding AI. Uh, if you would add one AI system in uh, to do the tax uh, for uh, either tax returns or, or, or grants, uh, like we have had here in the Netherlands, then you know you have a problem because you miss out on the, let's say, other AI or other human intelligence and other organizational intelligence, multiple people, multiple systems that are challenging each other uh, in order to make the right decision and also uh, things that can monitor, can supervise, can improve. Uh, there's meaningful control for humans, so there are multi you always need you know, an organization, meaning multiple uh, um, uh, organisms, uh, whether uh, people or systems or AI systems combined in order to make this work. So I'm, uh, I, I think there is a possibility there. I do agree with Ethan that uh, it, it, um, you don't always need a muscle car, uh, so like a, a large language models to make things happen. Uh, not only meaning that you know, small language models are interesting, they definitely are, but we can do things locally. Uh, it's all about the quality of the data and, and the right, uh, multi, in my point of view, multi multiplicity of, of algorithms that challenge each other to make the right uh, the decision very quickly on autonomous vehicles. Uh, you know, it's great that OpenAI has its own uh, characterization. It, it's not a standardization a development organization where others are. And for instance, the, the SAE level, um, um, which is in, used in, in mobility. You know, we lo look at level four where you actually, you know, don't need a driver and no, no, no steering wheel, uh, etc. And these kind of developments are ongoing, I think, in Taiwan and other countries in Europe. Um, and we're learning a lot from that. And actually, th these make sense uh, because they solve a particular challenge, a particular problem. So I'm, 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 uh, I, I think there's, there's a huge amount of needs um, on the AI, but not the LLMs and the centralized models uh, mm. too much. Well, um, societies and different institutions that we have uh, working for us is one thing, but this technology could also potentially upend entire economies, uh, erase entire categories of jobs. And of course, it might also create new jobs, but uh, this is the kind of upheaval that we haven't seen since the Industrial Revolution, maybe. Uh, but unlike that one, this one could happen on uh, a scale of months instead of decades. So, so Ethan, do you see a possible way, a feasible way to get us through that transition into something more stable? Yeah, from, from our observation, uh, industry by industry right now, a lot of land they are already using, for example, GPT or their own large language model. Uh, to improve the uh, efficiency and the, and also the workflow. And um, there are also different kinds of AI agent being created to uh, to replace the, uh, the current process. So I can already see the artificial intelligence is actually changing the industry in the whole scale. In Taiwan, we actually uh, help the uh, industry uh, try how to uh, standardize the process, how to uh, do the data government sheet, uh, how to using AI at the same time, how to evaluate the result. One thing need to be very careful is that be very careful about the bias of the artificial intelligence. We validate the result in a fidelity way uh, with the domain expert uh, working together, uh, put all the standard to measure how the artificial intelligence behave. Uh, and we also uh, have some uh, educational uh, program. For example, we work closely with the uh, uh, university that, that we provide a training program uh, so they can leverage the new tools of uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, artificial generative AI to uh, help them to write an asset or help them to create the lyrics, uh, create the songs, um, help them to create the, uh, the company brochure, for example. So there are different programs. I, I, I already see the, the uh, starting with a pretty simple tool uh, and then people starting using it. And Air Lab, we have people working here, bring the tool to the industry and the industry can make more use of it. Yeah. Now, these, these definitely sound very interesting, very promising. I mean, the tools that we have already are 
fantastic, uh, really, when you think about it. So uh, I, I want to sort of sum up this part of our discussion with, on, with, with uh, something on a slightly more positive note. Uh, uh, Arthur, what is one thing that uh, you are excited about when it comes to AGI and uh, more autonomous, really kind of thinking uh, models or intelligences? So we have uh, a numerous amounts of societal challenges uh, in countries and regions in the world. Um, we, we have limited resources. Um, so, you know, using the resources in the right way uh, is, is, is uh, the key uh, success factor. So technology, uh, again, qualitative data, the right algorithms, um, plural, because it's always multiple uh, processes there and focusing on the outcome to, uh, to achieve those challenges. I think uh, uh, AI and other capabilities will definitely uh, help, but not necessarily in the definition that is currently used in the media. Because again, uh, AI has been around, as you already mentioned, in intro introduction for a long time. Uh, and there's way more to do, and there's already a lot of things happening. Uh, so let's also focus on the, uh, the other 99% of the AI domain, which is uh, uh, also quite relevant and necessary. So my, my, my take is, um, you know, we have societal challenges, we have demographic issues and others. So, you know, we do need uh, uh, help, but of course, indeed, in a very uh, uh, transparent and accountable and trustworthy way. And, and same question to you, Ethan. Uh, what's one thing that you are excited for in this technology, in this field, in the coming year or two? Yeah, so when, when, I, um, uh, when we start have the uh, chat GPT, then we can see the artificial intelligence can support people and a lot of uh, human thinking workflow. And now we, we have this large language model that can be used in the uh, in, in hospital in, or in a company. We call it a private uh, large language model like with the domain expertise. And this large language model with domain expertise, we call it federated GPT, which means that Taiwan LA, we can train a language model like it's like a, a graduate student, graduate from Taiwan LA. And this, uh, this graduate uh, language model can go to the institute and learn from the data inside the institute. And we don't, uh, this data will stay in the institute, the AI will grow along with the uh, with the company, with the process that the, the company set up. You can see in the future, we maybe it's not artificial general intelligence, you still need a human assist at this moment. And maybe it's not a super intelligent because inside the institute, uh, it's not like the, the big AI model in, in the cloud, but this uh, small uh, expert model is actually already improving the process of the hospital of the financial banks in Taiwan. I think this kind of expertise and this kind of support for human intelligence is what I'm personally the most excited about. Uh, but uh, let's bring in our audience. How do you think artificial general intelligence could benefit you and humanity? Let us know in the comments below, especially if you are a recently self-aware AI. Click the video beside me for a discussion of AGI risks, control, and accountability, and subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell if you don't want to miss more stories on tech and finance from Taiwan.